Um, I, I have one more question and for all of you. Um, but we also live in, even in the churches, the reality is that many of our young people have given away parts of themselves, whether it's their bodies or their hearts, or even their minds, and they bought into some of the lies um, and some of the half-truths that the world puts out there. And um, just from your experience, what has helped you on the way back to, you know, a lot of people may question if you can even recover purity, um, that there's this idea that once it's gone, it's gone. How would you address those people that might be in that struggle? I was telling Guy Halleck earlier that the fact that I'm speaking at a purity banquet is a testimony that God has a sense of humor. <laughs> God is into redeeming us. He is into redeeming us. If, if you've lost your purity, um, whether it be through pornography or through a sexual act, God can redeem that situation. He's very interested in redeeming that situation. I know that he has personally redeemed me um, from my former way of thinking. As I mentioned, I didn't come to Christ until I was in, uh, well, I came to Christ when I was 10, but I didn't follow him until my mid-20s. That's what God does. He takes broken things and he fixes them. He's, he's the expert at that. And he can do that with you if you've lost uh, a portion of your purity. He's very interested in doing that. So don't get into it's, it's over, it's, all, it's done, I don't know why I'm here. No, 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 he's, he's interested. You, watch him redeem you. It's, it's fascinating. I think Eric's testimony is a testimony of just that question. And one final question. Um, <laughs> sorry. Because just from, from all of you sharing, it sounds like there was a greater sense of community um, in, involved that you weren't um, just um, either a couple trying to do this on your own or even like a family trying to do this thing on your own. So my question is, what do you look for in other families that can come, kind of, and how do you invite them to come alongside you on this journey? Um, so, yeah, can you speak to that? Ours was, I guess, uh, it's only unique from the standpoint that we homeschooled. And we were homeschooling in a group with like-minded people. Now that doesn't mean that many people who don't homeschool aren't wonderful as well. <laughs> I'm not singling that out, but it seemed easy in that regard for us because of our circumstances. And for Heather and I, we, we were on our own, and I think that you, as young couples, you'd be amazed at how many adults that are surrounding you or maybe people that are just a little bit older than you or have been there um, shortly before you are willing to uh, come alongside you with, with just you asking them. So, and Heather and I, it was something that we wanted bad enough that, that we asked people. Well, and hopefully that can start today here at this church. Um, you know, we have a lot of families around here, and I think it's safe to say that we're all walking these things together. Um, even Corinth and I with Carissa, we're trying to figure out how to talk to her about this, and she doesn't even understand the words that are coming out of her mouth. And we know that our modeling of it is just as important as that. Well, thank you for coming out today. This is a really important conversation. Hopefully we can have this conversation more often than once every two years. Um, but um, I just, hopefully you've been blessed and at least maybe it gives you something that you and your family can go home and talk about even more. And at the very least, you started a conversation um, that we can have, not just as a church, but you can take on as the church in your home as well. And so why don't we all stand? We're going to receive God's blessing. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for this time that you've given us to come together as a family and around a meal to have a conversation. God, we know that it's in those common times that you seem to speak most loudest and, and, and most clearly to us. And, and we thank you for the Claflin family and the Smiths and just their openness with us today. And we thank you for the work that we see you doing in their lives. And Lord, we just ask that we would be open to receiving that same work in our lives. 
Thank you most of all for Jesus Christ who comes to set apart and purify a people to give back to you, God, so that we, on that final day, will stand before the one who loves us and we will be wearing white. And God, we look forward to that day and anything that we need to surrender or we need to step out in faith to do and to believe um, so that you would finish that work in us. We just surrender to that at this point in time. Lord, bless these families. Help them to have the courage and the grace and to seek out your truth and to hold themselves accountable to that truth and help them to join together with other families that we might be a church and a community that sees this transformation um, around your desires for us um, happen and that we would see more and more, just like Eric said, that we are new creations. We are different people and we praise you because of it. So thank you for today. Help us to leave here worshiping you for all that you have done. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks a lot.